Craig, welcome. Welcome to The One. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. It's a treat to have you here. I want to introduce to you our, our guest for today. He is Craig Gorman. Craig Gorman has been in the real estate business for about 24 years. He works over at Intero Real Estate and, and he's the president-elect of, and you might have to help me on the name of this, but the Santa Clara County Association of Realtors. Association of Realtors. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today, and I've got. To, I'm looking forward to hearing some of these answers. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you all for being here as well. Yes, <clears throat> Craig, why did you decide to go into real estate, and what has kept you going all of these years? Twenty-four years. Yes, I'm glad that you asked that. You know, and it's actually the uh, the malefactors that have got me into this. You know, there's a <laughs> lot of people out there that that are just doing injustice for people, and you know, surprisingly enough, I wanted been in sales my whole life. And I wanted to be in something that could make a difference in people's lives. And what I was doing before, selling a product, really didn't make much difference in people's lives, so I got into real estate. And it's been very rewarding because I've been able to help people do justice in what they need to do. And there's a lot of different situations that have happened. So the main thing is, is the, the, the challenge of being able to be there for people, being able to help them have a better life is what's really kept me going. And also my compassion for uh, helping people and positive attitude is what's really kept me going day after day, no matter what's been happening in the market. Excellent, excellent. And, and you kind of point towards what the show is all about. The show is about people who are the one, the one that can make a difference with people in the world. So thank you for that. Thank you. <clears throat> You've been selling real estate for over 24 years. I would think, hmm, I would think you'd be pretty good at what you're doing. Do you, do you actually use a personal coach, by the way, or a real estate coach? You know, I actually do, and it's kind of surprising. I mean, um, uh, Tiger Woods is a pretty good golfer, isn't he? Yes. You know, and he actually has two or three coaches. So I find that, you know, if you want to stay at the top of your game, which, which I definitely do, and the main thing is, is real estate changes on a daily basis. You know, just like a light switch. One day the light's on, one day the light's off. So the best way to be able to help my people is to be able to stay one step ahead of what's happening in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So by having a personal coach, uh, by working with them on a daily basis, I actually can be the best, find out what's happening in the market, and stay one step ahead of it. And if I can stay a, a step ahead of the market, meaning if I can stay a step ahead of everybody else, I can better serve my clients, help them sell their house at a much higher price, and most of all, be able to help the buyers to negotiate a better deal on their side. Very good. Very good. Now, I, as I understand it, there's a lot more to selling real estate than there is just planting a sign in the front lawn and, and magically it gets sold, right? Is, so what, what's your strategy on, on making this happen for families? You know, thanks for asking that because, you know, it, it's a misconception because everybody thinks, wow, we sure, get, sure pay realtors a lot of money and all they do is put a sign in the yard and then they go to the beach and wait for the phone to ring. You know, I wish that's the way it, used, it was. Uh, it'd be much easier. So my main strategy is, is actually being a, aggressive marketing, meaning that you know, there's a lot more to just putting a sign in the yard. You have to position the property. Everybody thinks that you know, if you price the home right, that's all you have to do. But what it really breaks down to is it's, it's exposure. Why do they have the candy bars next to the cash register? It's exposure. So I do the same thing with people's homes. By positioning them according to the, to the competition, not only in pricing, but also how they show, and then the most important thing, which people really don't give much credit to, the verbiage that you put on the MLS. Mm. Our job is to get you to the property. You know, there's a lot of times my sellers will call me up and say, you know, Craig, you must have made a mistake because I read the information on my house. That's not my house. <laughs> I go, yes, it is. In the eye of a salesman, it is your home. If people get to your home and then decide that something's different, at least they get to your home. The more people we get to the home, the higher the price we can get for them. Excellent. And I, I heard something there, if you don't mind, I'd like to clarify just a little bit. For those of us who aren't in real estate, I don't know what MLS stands for. The MLS for. is the Multiple Listing Service, which is, which is an online service. So the main thing is when realtors are looking for property, and even when buyers are looking, they get to read some verbiage about the home. If it just says, come see me, it's a three-bedroom, two-bath home, you're not going to get excited about it. So my job is actually to get people excited, to get the agents excited, to get the buyers excited, to get the neighbors excited, so they'll want to bring everybody to look at the property. Excellent. So I, I apologize. We, we kind of get used to when we're in, in a certain industry, we kind of get used to our own verbiage. Just like you do half the time I'm talking to you with your financial 
information and I have to say, okay, so what are we talking about? Yes, <laughs> it, it's the terminology in each industry is a little bit different and yet we get so used to it, we don't necessarily remember to create it in such a way that everybody understands. Definitely, definitely so. so that, Thank you. That is one of those great, great skills to have. Now, I'm hearing, I'm hearing that you're actually able to help some of those people who have highly appreciated properties, that is to say they've got a capital gains issue. Yes. Maybe you could say a little bit more about that. You know, Rick, thanks for asking that. You know, it, it's kind of a misconception that people think that legacy planning is, is only done through a financial planner like yourself. Right. You know, actually as realtors, we actually have a big key factor in that because of the fact that there's a lot of people that have, like you say, capital gains in their property. What we can do is help people transition their capital gains um, by manage, you know, to stop managing the properties, or best of all, we can help them position their wealth so they can transfer it in, in other avenues. You know, by working with my team, we can help transition their wealth to the heirs, which a lot of people hopefully will want to do, or we can help them potentially replace their, their real estate income with other passive income. You know, I leave all that to the CPAs. I don't know exactly how it works behind, behind the scenes, I just know how it works on our end. Excellent. Well, Craig, in conclusion, what else do you think our viewers might want to know about you and, and who you are out in the community? You know, thanks for asking that. You know, nowadays everybody's always looking for the main bottom line, the price. And the one thing that I really want to tell people is you, you have to look at the big picture. When you're, when, you're, when you're selling a property, you may look for that, you know, pray and sell, help you sell, a discount broker. You think, oh my God, I'm going to save a couple thousand dollars with that person overusing a, 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 a full-scale agent like myself. Well, it's really a misconception because the real bottom line is not what I put in my pocket. It's what you, the consumer, puts in your pocket. So what people really have to do is think of the large picture. Don't think of the small picture. Same thing when you're a buyer. A lot of buyers are looking for that agent that will kick them back a thousand dollars. That's not the important thing. Craig. Thank you so much for your time, and I can absolutely guarantee you are the one. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you, folks.